Welcome to the second video of the FNC series by TMS Software. Today we're going to have a closer look at the base classes and component development. I outlined the video as follows. First of all, I want to start by explaining the reasoning behind the architecture that TMS Software has chosen for the framework. In order to determine why the architecture looks like it does, we're going to have a closer look at the interaction, that means mouse interaction and keyboard interactions of the user, then all painting related issues. If you think of component development, that means the paint method of a component. And then of course, how do several frameworks handle graphics? That means if you have a T image component on a form, for example, and you want to load PNG or JPEG content, how do the different frameworks deal with that? This will lead us to the base classes, foremost TTMS FNC custom component and control, one for the non-visual components and the other one for the visual components, the so-called controls. And we'll have a look at the TTMS FNC graphics classes. We'll finish off this video by showing you a demonstration of a custom component, especially for FNC, and we'll motivate you why it makes sense to develop more components for the FNC framework and what kind of advantages you have doing that. Let's start with the architecture of FNC or why FNC makes our life so freaking easy. Sorry for being a little bit colloquial here, but it's just like I said, if you have a look at all the different slides that I'm going to show you in the next couple of minutes, you're going to realize, or you're hopefully going to say, why didn't I have this idea about FNC myself and why am I not using it already? So let's start off by having a look at the class structure of the different frameworks. In the VCL, all the controls are derived from T custom control. If you look at FireMonkey, it's T control. And then if you look at Lazarus, it's T custom control again. So we got three frameworks and three different approaches because T custom control in the VCL looks a little bit different than the one in Lazarus. Second of all, the Rad Studio IDE. Of course, this one doesn't apply for Lazarus because Lazarus has its own IDE. However, looking at Rad Studio, we've got one major limitation, which is that the same type name and a class type is a type name has to be unique in all the frameworks. That means if you have a component that is called T button in VCL, it can't be the same component in FireMarkey that's named T button. It has to be in a different namespace or a different unit, so to speak. So looking at the final aspect, which are framework specific aspects, this is the biggest one of them all. So each framework abstracts from the underlying operating system. However, some aspects are better in certain frameworks. For example, VCL, let's be honest here, has been written for Windows. So you'll find a lot of Windows stuff in the VCL where you don't have to use the Win32 API. So it always is a pretty good idea to use the RTL and framework specific classes instead of writing your own stuff, stay with what the framework offers. And obviously if you develop a FireMonkey application, you are going to make use of the graphic specifics that the FireMonkey framework offers. Let's continue by having a look at the different coordinate systems that the frameworks use. In VCL and Lazarus, coordinates are given using integers. And in FireMonkey, we can use floats or you have to use floats. Also, FireMonkey has included support for rotation and scaling. Thankfully, the coordinate systems all have the same origin. It's always the top left corner. That means top left is always zero, zero. Furthermore, and this makes things so much more difficult, Drawing operations and mouse interactions are completely different in all the frameworks. I'm going to show you how. But before I do that, tfont, which is the class that is used for fonts in the different frameworks, VCL and Lazarus, for example, the tfont class has a color property in order to set the color for the text that is written with that font. And in FireMonkey, this all works differently. I do have a font using tfont. However, in order to write something in a certain color, you also need a different class, which is called tfill, which basically determines the fill of the text of the font that you select. So different. Looking at the keyboard and mouse interaction, as I suggested two slides ago. So the biggest problem is that events have a completely different fingerprint in all the different frameworks. 
we have all gotten used to mouse up, mouse down, mouse move from the VCL framework. Mouse up is being triggered when the user releases the mouse button, mouse down is being triggered when the user presses the mouse and mouse move, obviously, if the mouse is being used. That means there is some kind of coordinate change. Same for the keyboard with key up, key down, and key press. And of course, also very different in all the different frameworks because considering FireMonkey, which is also supporting the mobile platforms, drag and drop has to be different. Because thinking of the iPhone, for example, drag and drop is a totally different thing on the iPhone compared to Windows. What makes drawing operations so difficult is that the T-Canvas class, which we gotten used to from the VCL, has not been carried over the same way to Lazarus and FireMonkey. One major reason for this is that in the VCL, the T-Canvas class is primarily a wrapper for the Windows GDI. Obviously, that won't suffice for FireMonkey. So FireMonkey wraps around OpenGL, CRUDs, and GDI+. Furthermore, data types are also very different in all the different frameworks. For example, in order to identify a key, you have to use different constants in the VCL and in FireMonkey. Same for constants for alignment, if you want to align a text left, center, or justify. Color definitions are also pretty tricky. The reason for this is also that the VCL is not big on graphics, so you have the standard colors, but you don't have all the options included in the framework that FireMonkey offers. In FireMonkey, you have all these different color systems. You can convert colors between different color systems, and that means also that you have different or more constants for colors. And of course, there's so much more than these three examples. Looking at the graphics, which I already said on the slide before, when you want to deal with a bitmap or a JPEG or whatever, in the VCL, you have tbitmap for the Windows BMP file. And whenever you need a different file format, for example, ping or JPEGs, then you use tpicture and tpicture has subclasses derived from tpicture which are called tpng image tjpeg image and so on in lazarus the tpicture class is all knowing so basically you can load bitmaps you can load gif files you can use jpegs whatever you want this class does it all the same for firemonkey however in firemonkey it's called tbitmap again which makes things really really difficult when you switch between different frameworks because one time you have to use tbitmap, one time you have to use tpicture. So let's have a look how FNC does it. Obviously we can't use an approach where we implement a class that's below everything that I just mentioned. So you have to define new classes, new base classes at the top of the class tree. For this FNC primarily defines the TTMS FNC custom control for the controls and TTMS FNC custom component for the components. That means components that are not being painted or drawn, so-called non-visual controls. Furthermore, we have TTMS FNC graphics, which offers everything that has to do with painting, loading graphics, and basically determining the fonts and, and the stroke and the fill of things you want to show to the user. So let's start with TTMS FNC graphics. It offers a canvas to draw things. This is great. That means we have the same canvas in all the frameworks. This canvas defines a stroke with style, width, and color, a fill, which can be a color or a gradient, and also a font, which defines a font family and a color, size, and all the other stuff that you're used to from the VCL. And also the canvas has unique color definitions over all the frameworks. Furthermore, in order to load graphics, like BMP, JPEG, and so on, you have a big class which is called TTMS FNC Bitmap, which basically would offer you in the VCL the same kind of comfort that you have in FireMonkey and Lazarus. Looking at TTMS FNC Custom Control, there's one major difference to the other framework's definitions of their custom controls. This class offers the same events for mouse and keyboard interaction in all of the frameworks. This makes it easy to develop components for all the frameworks. As I've talked about being able to offer components in all the different frameworks, this is exactly what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a component that will be custom drawn, and this component will support keyboard events, mouse events. 
it will use graphics ping in this case and this component you can use it in Lazarus you can use it in FireMonkey and VCL and you only have to develop it once and furthermore just before I'm going to show you the component I'm showing you this because all the components that are included in the FNC UI kit are basically developed the same way so TMS makes sure that all their components work in all the frameworks and you can still rely on what I've shown you before that you have the same canvas, the same font, the same colors. You can always depend on that. The demonstration will be in Delphi 10.2 Tokyo. But before I start, I will just give you a quick overview on the important aspects or of the main benefits implementing a component in FNC and what the key aspects are. On the website from TMS, you will find a blog article that explains the development of a custom component in great detail. Furthermore, TMS software offers one-day workshops that go deeper than the article that give you a step-by-step -step instruction and first-hand experience how to develop components for FNC and also how to include FNC into your existing projects. Before we start, let me show you what kind of component we're going to develop. I ran the VCL example of the component and you see we're going to define a custom track bar. The track bar has a background which is called the slider and the thumb which you can move and you can see that we have an integer value for the track bar value and we can move this from left to right in order to change the value. Looking at the source code, we see that the component is derived from TTMS FNC custom control. However, looking at the users clause, we see that everything seems to be pretty much determined on the VCL. We have VCL dot TMS FNC custom control and so on. So didn't I explain to you that FNC is for all frameworks and not only the VCL? Does this mean you have to write this kind of source code for every framework? In a way it does. However, in order to develop an FNC component, you only have to write it once. And TMS software provides a script that will generate the source code for the FireMonkey or for the Lazarus code for you. Of course, you can also start with FireMonkey and generate the VCL and the Lazarus source code. That's kind of your preference, whatever you want to do. Let's look at the event definitions first. As you can see, we have familiar names like key down, mouse down, mouse move, mouse up. And these fingerprints might be a little bit complex at first sight. However, of course, you have to get to know TTMS FNC custom control first. This video can't do that for you. However, be assured, these definitions are going to be the same for every framework. Then, instead of paint, we have a method that is called draw. You have to override it in order to draw or paint your component. What is the key point of FNC is the fact that you define your properties, not with the types that you're used to from the VCL or from FireMonkey. At this point, you use the types that FNC provides. So any color is of type TTMS FNC graphics color. The font is of type TTMS FNC graphics font. That makes certain that you can use the same types for every framework. Furthermore, you use for the slider and for the thumb, the FNC bitmap type. This is a class that allows you to load any graphic in any framework with the same comfort as in FireMonkey and Lazarus. Looking at the VCL demo, you see that the component has not been registered in the IDE. We create the component in the create constructor of the form. And here you can also see that we use constants that are being defined by FNC. So the color definition wide is a constant from FNC. Furthermore, you see that coordinates are being specified as integers and you can use a method called load from file to load your graphics. In this case, these are ping graphics. Furthermore, you have the font class that is very similar to the VCL font class. We already ran this application, so there's no need to do that again. Looking at the form create event in the FireMonkey demo, we see that we can use the same constants, the same coordinates, the same load from file methods. Everything is precisely the same. Running the demonstration also shows that it looks the same. You wouldn't be able to determine if it is the VCL application or the FireMonkey application. The component is being drawn precisely the same way. So you've seen that we implemented the control using the VCL first. 
So in order to generate the classes for FireMonkey and for Lazarus, you would have to use the script 2fmx lsc.bat, which is provided by TMS software. And that will take care to replace all the namespaces and stuff inside of your source files. I also owe you where to find the blog article. The URL is given above, and this article will explain everything in great detail. It will dive deeper into unit organization, how to rename your unit names, how to rename your type names, and how to set everything up in the different IDEs. We are already at the end of this video. I really hope that this demonstration gave you insight into the architecture of FNC, that you saw why TMS has structured the classes the way they did, and that it will be a great starting point to write your own components in this framework, that you can use them in all the other frameworks without having to differentiate between FireMonkey, VCL, and Lazarus. The following videos we will dive deeper into the framework and have a look at all the controls that are already available from TMS software. TMS spent a huge amount of time not only providing basic components like button and label type components for FNC, they already provided FNC versions of their planner control and grid controls for FNC. So that's exactly what we're going to look into the next couple of videos. I really hope I could trigger your interest and see you next time.